Daily active users coming in slightly higher than estimates, but uh, ad revenue light, overall revenue light, a big loss in, in Reality Labs, $2.8 billion, you know, where they are investing heavily. What's your takeaway? Emily, I haven't had, a, you know, we don't own Facebook and I'm not de de super detailed involved in it. I think the stock was up a little bit after hours, so the street must think it uh, was positive on it. And, um, and I would tell you that expectations, I'm sure, were pretty darn low on it. I still think, I think, I think Facebook has some issues maybe under the covers. Um, you, you're seeing, I think, like Kim Kardashian or one of the Kardashians was out recently tweeting or something of talking about how like she wished Instagram would just stop copying all the bite dance, the bite dance slash TikTok, uh, you know, um, you know, features. Um, you, you know, if anybody that's on their Instagram feeds can't help but notice how many ads there are. I think TikTok is giving these people, these guys are run for their money in, um, in, in this, you know, in, in this younger demographic. And I think, I, I think like Snapchat still is trying to use the macro as the biggest reason. Like, I think they have a other reason than that their users are, you know, on other platforms. Right. So just how serious do you think Facebook slash Instagram's TikTok problem is. I think it's pretty darn serious. And it will be, you know, I, I don't know when, uh, you know, full disclosure, we're ByteDance investors, but uh, which owns TikTok. Um, I don't, it would be really fascinating to know, you know, what the very specific, when the public starts to know how fast the ByteDance and TikTok are growing, um, I think there's going to be a lot more written about how much pain these these companies are are experiencing from these demographics. By the way, just go ask a bunch of twenty to twenty five year olds or twenty to thirty year olds, you know, how much time they spend on on TikTok versus Instagram versus you know Facebook Blue, like that that or Snapchat. That'll answer your question. Right. Well, the question is, is the digital ad spend also shifting uh, yeah. dramatically? It certainly shifting seems around. like there's an attention shift. But is the money going to follow? I think I think it's like so. Um, I was speaking to some again um, due to our bite dance research and TikTok research. Um, I think a lot of the TikTok um, ad budgets are still um, in the experimental phase. I think they're moving quickly mm -hmm. out of it into much bigger phases. But like again, just relative to the size of Facebook, like you know, TikTok's U.S. business is not that big uh, yet but there's obviously a huge amount of room to expand. You're also an investor in Alibaba and you know they're now exploring this primary listing in Hong Kong. How are you thinking about Chinese tech companies right now? There are so many <laughs> complicated dynamics. <laughs> That's an understatement. Um, first on the Alibaba question, um, I, I think what they're, I think the biggest impact, like the, the market as of when it was kind of yesterday, I don't know if it was leaked or the day before, it was kind of a muted response, up a couple percent. You know, it was a down market, so it was maybe a little more muted, but it wasn't like huge. I think the biggest advantage to uh, Alibaba being at the primary, as I understand it, the primary uh, listing to be in um, in Hong Kong, uh, not in the U.S., is that they'll have access to the China Connect, the Hong Kong Connect, which is a you know could I think I saw one research analyst say anywhere from six to twenty-five billion of incremental demand coming out of domestic China. I would want to buy the stock. It's cheap. So is every other Chinese, you know, internet company. Um, it'll either prove right now to be the best buying opportunity or probably Ooh. dead money. Um, your guess is I don't really understand the zero COVID thing, um, but uh, it, it just makes, it appears to me these people are like, like tanking their economy and they don't need to be, but your guess is as good as mine is why and mm -hmm. when that ends and things like that. I like, you know, we own some Alibaba, haven't bought more, haven't sold it. I don't know. I, I do think, though, that multiples are will be in the multiple that somebody will pay for a Chinese equity is going to be impaired for a long time. Because right. let's say all of a sudden they get like, you know, uh, they get like more government approval. The government looks friendly. Well, guess what? That doesn't mean in two years they change their mind. And I think people right. are going to remember that. Well, hopefully for you, not dead money. I, I understand Dial Capital got acquired a minority stake in Lead Edge Capital. How do you see Lead Edge differentiating, differentiating itself from the pack? You know, where do you think you're going to find the next Uber? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So how we, uh, how we differentiate ourselves is very unique for most funds. And that like most funds are solely backed by like endowments, pension funds, universities, insurance companies. Um, most of our capital by number, actually like 95% of our capital by, by a number of investors is actually like world-class execs and entrepreneurs. And we leverage those people to like help our companies grow faster. Uh, and so whether, you know, somebody might be looking for a female audit chair or looking for like customer intros or things like that. And in the whole LP base has grown via like word of mouth over the last decade. Um, and so like, we think there's a ton of interesting opportunities in software and that the, and our LP base can help, uh, and enable companies to grow faster. And we've been fortunate to back a bunch of great companies, whether it's companies like Toast or Asana uh, or, or Bizarre Voice and Marketo earlier on, our companies like Well Health, um, a whole host of uh, companies. And um, like Microsoft said it best on their quarterly call uh, yesterday when they said, look, the, the guidance was good, the numbers were good. And they made the comment at the end that, look, G IT spend as a percentage of GDP is going up. And as it goes up, this whole software, you know, all these software companies are going to continue to, you know, rise. I'm not telling you, you that there's a, you know, there may or may not be a recession. There probably will. Of course, they will slow down. No different than they did in the great financial crisis in 08 and 09. But they then, you know, came growing back again. And I think we are in the very early stages of like a software super cycle that could last 20 years or more.